Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we're continuing the building of the QCX Mini Kit. I'm going to show you how I have laid things out, and the very first thing to do is to wind a key transformer, a toroid, that uh, is the hardest part of the project. Actually, you get it out of the way right up front where there's nothing else on the board that can get in the way of getting this thing on and getting it tested and make sure it works right. Uh, T1 is the name. It's the only transformer. You could just call it T, I guess. But um, the kit building is interesting and uh, in response to requests I'm trying to show you all the different steps that you go through to build a kit and to make sure that it's right. So what I'm going to show you is the layout and how I use it and then how I've got that uh, coil uh, wound, that toroid. Uh, you have to put the wire through the toroid, pull it tight, put it through again and so on. My wife came in and asked if I was doing uh, knitting or needlepoint, <laughs> it kind of feels like that sometimes. Um, and in order to make sure that I had the correct number of turns, I actually photographed it so I could tick them off on a printout of the photograph and make sure I had the right number of turns. So let's take a look. This shows my workbench, which is right opposite my desk, and all the things all set up to start the kit build. Um, and I've got the instruction manual open to the first step. Uh, I've got my tools out there, my circuit board holder, all, all kinds of things in there too. So um, let's take a look at some of these individually. This is my uh, tool bin where I keep all of my electronics tools in here. Everything from clip leads to solder to tiny little screwdrivers to uh, a spare wire uh, and so on, all in one place. Eventually these will get spread all over the, the desk, but they start in one place. This little thing here, um, you can get these real cheap in a million different places. See this clip right here? Uh, this used to have one down here too till it fell off, but uh, this clip is very handy for holding up pieces of wire that I want to tin or uh, do something with like that. This right here is a circuit board holder. You see these two jaws right here? You can slide this thing down here and put a little pressure with this spring and hold a circuit board right here. And then you can pivot the circuit board around this axis here. Uh, and uh, solder different parts of it. It's an extremely handy tool. If you go to my website um, for uh, there's a, a place on the website where I list a bunch of these products uh, and uh, you can follow the link below and it will give you a link to Amazon uh, where you can find it. Um, fair warning, I get a little bit of a kickback if you order it there. You don't pay any more, but I get just a little uh, piece of it. Uh, sometimes those links get a little bit old. I've had this one for quite a while, but boy, I sure love it for construction. We've got the manual out. Uh, the very first step is to put in this toroid that has to be wound. Uh, the thing about this toroid is it's actually a transformer. There's one big winding there. Here, here, and here are three more windings. Uh, this is the one for, I think, 40 meters. The uh, 20 meter kit, which is the one I'm building, there's only three, three, and three turns right here, and 30 around this way. Here's all the parts in that uh, cookie sheet, so they won't fall out. They're all kind of, sort of, uh, in there by uh, parts and pieces. Uh, at least they're all inside this cookie tin. That's the rule. It's either inside the cookie tin or on the circuit board. This is my soldering station. It's actually a, um, a surface mount device uh, rework station. So it has a hot air gun right here, which can put ridiculously hot air out of here. You've got to be careful with this thing because it will start a fire. Um, and then this is my little holder for the soldering uh, pencil that, that I've got here. And I can control the temperature. It's in degrees centigrade, but 
um, just have to remember what temperature you want. And uh, with the hot air, uh, it actually makes air hot enough that it will solder a joint. You use this to remove an SMD component by heating the air and the air Un, uh, the air melts the solder on all pins simultaneously. So you've got a volume and a temperature. Volume, here's the volume of air, the amount of air, and so on. So these are my light speed uh, headsets for flying. Uh, this is another handy tool and I did use it uh, tonight while I was trying to determine what uh, was going on with the coil I was winding. As it turned out, I had two windings kind of looped around each other. I got that straightened out. I have some test equipment. Uh, down over here is a, a signal generator. There's a little power supply right here. Uh, my oscilloscope and my spectrum analyzer. Um, and this is step one, is winding this coil. Um, the reason I took this shot was so that I could print it out and tick off windings. A winding is defined as a wire through the core. So I had to count how many windings went through the core. We wanted 30 and that's what I got. This is the full uh, circuit, uh, the full part uh, bound this particular kit the QCX this is the part that gives the most people the most trouble is getting this silly toroid wound right I spent about two hours on this particular one here and uh, it's not soldered in yet it will be tomorrow but it is in place and I have looked at it very carefully including under the microscope this wire right here goes to there this wire comes underneath and goes to there. It comes here over, 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 and then into there. Over, 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 and then into there. Over, 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 and then into there. And yes, I did have to adjust the number of windings. Um, I actually made this picture of it and then printed this on a color printer and then ticked off the number of wires going through the core to make sure I had 30 here, 3, 3, and 3, which is the 20 meter uh, setup for the coil. So this is where I am tonight. I will get back to doing a little bit more constructing. In every other video or so, I'll show you the progress that I've made on this particular kit. Kit building is part and parcel of ham radio and a lot of fun. Well, that's not too bad a progress for the first day actually looking at the kit. Uh, obviously, I have already finished all of the inventory. I found everything. Um, there was an extra little hank of wire in there. Uh, there were a couple extra screws and stuff, uh, but uh, he warned us that, uh, you know, he puts his kits together based on all bands and then puts a few things in that are for specific bands in this particular radio is for 20 meter CW at 5 watts. So um, that's about all it took. Comment, if you will. Tell me the kinds of things that have been difficult for you in kit building and uh, what you'd like me to make sure I touch on as we work through getting this kit built and on the air. In the meantime, thank you so very much. Please subscribe to this channel. Also, please check out decastlercom slash support for different ways that you can support this channel, including everything from um, Patreon and uh, PayPal tips, uh, buying the thumb drives with licensing videos on them, and so on. And until we next meet, 73.